Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Towing Compliance. I was visiting my mother with my car, picking her up to go to a restaurant. At her residence I had trouble finding a parking spot, so I parked my car near an entryway. Parked in quotes because I kept the car running and stayed behind the wheel, texting my mom to come out because I'm waiting for her, in case I have to move the car to let someone else pass. While I was waiting for my mom, another resident pulled up in his car and went into the entryway. I had to move the car a bit to let him in. The dude exited his car and came to me, red faced. What do you think you are doing? You can't park here, that's illegal. That's why the car is running and I'm sitting inside. I'm not parking. Like heck you are. I'm calling the tow service and you better not move. And then he went into his home. So I complied. I was angry, but I stayed. Technically, I could have just left, driving carefully around him. He never wrote down my license plate and I did not violate any rules. But he said to not move, so I didn't. When my mom came down, I explained the situation to her and she agreed with me that I have not broken any laws. A few minutes later, the tow truck came. I stepped out with a bit of a skull on my face, ready to clear up the misunderstanding, but instead the tower took the initiative with a smile. Ah, I see what's going on, you got blocked in, let me fix that for you. And he towed the other guy's car. In the end, the angry dude had to pay to get his car back, as well as pay for the towing, since he called the tow service. And I got a nice meal at a restaurant and a funny story to tell. The next story is called Fix the Keycard. This just happened and I think it's hilarious. I'm the facility manager for my building. Everything that happens and goes wrong is my responsibility. So I make sure everything runs smoothly. My boss had made it clear. It's my building and I was hired to not only keep people in line but run everything. I'm not a jerk but I hold people accountable. Forcibly but politely. There was no facility manager for a long time before I came along. And both clients and employees ran amok with no order. In the 4 months I've been here, my boss has praised my performance and has gone to bed for me countless times. She's the best boss I've ever had. I've got a firm but fair approach and my reputation reflects that. I've got a Karen in the building. And trust me, the name stereotype applies, who's just a counselor for family service has nothing to do with our group. She likes to complain about everything and gives my boss a headache almost daily. She shares an office with another woman, who's unfortunately picking up on her Karen tendencies. A Karen in training. I've been doing a keycard audit all week and I knew to leave Karen's keycard alone because she's the only Karen in the building, so her name stands out. I am missing 75 keycards, lots of former employees having all door access dating all the way back to 2015. Can't have that, so I deleted a lot of them, especially if it had a recce name or just a room number. However, I did delete Karen in training's keycard information because it wasn't under her name. She just came to tell me her keycard wasn't working, a Karen happened to be passing by and overheard it. I went and fixed the keycard and we ran to go check to see if it worked or not. We found Karen outside the office waiting, complaining to my boss that her keycard didn't work either. Karen wandered away and my boss rolled her eyes and I smiled and I told her I would take care of it. After checking to make sure Karen in training's keycard worked, I went downstairs to check the system, looked up Karen and wouldn't you know it, her keycard was completely fine. In fact, it showed she had a master keycard. So I changed all of her permissions and limited her back to just her room only. I went upstairs and got my boss's attention because her office is next door to the ladies and I mouthed, listen and pointed. I opened the door and was all, hey Karen, I went and checked your keycard in the system. Everything is good to go. In fact, it said you had a master key to the building and per the company orders, since you're not a contractor or a company employee, I can't give you that access. So I had to revoke your status to justice room only. Can't have you bugging people on official business. Wink. Thanks for bringing your keycard to my attention. She started to object that she needed the master keycard because XYZ. I was all, yeah, sorry, maybe before, but I'm the facility manager and you don't need access to everything except this office. And if you do, it's outside your pay grade, so you have to come to get me. Okay? Cool. Thanks. Bye. And then I just closed the door on her mid-sentence. My boss was quietly in her office and gave me an air high five. The third story is called Sheep Boss. 
I used the work for a small company and due to the bus time I'd arrived at work 45 minutes early every day. I was nearly always first in, so we'd be the one opening up the office and getting things set up. My boss was pretty tired, so this would even include switching on the fridge after a weekend. One of the tasks I took upon myself to do was to buy the milk for the office, in my 45 minutes unpaid time. The shop was about a 20 minute round trip and I always got enough to last the week. In the UK we pay for plastic bags, so I always try to have a couple of spare ones in my rug bag. However, sometimes I just forgot, so would buy one from the shop. While I was allowed to expense the milk, sometimes I would forget or lose the receipt etc. So then the company would be getting free milk. One day I submitted my expense claim and left the receipt on the finance manager's i.e. boss's wife desk and went for a meeting. Usually when this happened I would come back to a couple of grid to cover the milk. This time however I came back to the money and a note asking me if I could stop expensing the company for 5p plastic bags as it's inefficient and a waste of company resources. So I did. In the 12 months I continued to work for them, I never bought milk again for the office and stopped doing any chores in the opening up of the office, other than switch off the security alarms. I'd instead use that 45 minutes to eat breakfast or even just sleep. For the sake of 5p every couple of weeks, the company lost someone doing office chores for free. They had to start paying for all their milk. Plus they had the inconvenience of running out of milk during the day with someone having to use work, i.e. paid time to buy more which was even more awkward when we had clients in. The next story is called Want a Receipt. I work for a company that creates a lot of scrap copper and we gather it together in the office in big bins. Over the course of a few months we end up with several hundred kilos and someone takes it to the scrap metal place nearby and they give us cash. There's no formal arrangement in place in regards to who takes it. It's just whoever has an hour or two spare once every few months and happens to decide to go and get rid of it. Well, twice running it was me and the higher ups had decided instead of the money going into a beer slush fund it was to go to upper management who would use it for some other purpose unknown to me. Probably the same thing but for managers only. I was told to get a receipt. No problem. I took the scrap down to the scrap metal place, they weighted it and gave me $700 or so and I asked for a receipt. They asked for my driver's license for ID purposes, as lots of people steal copper from building sites so it's now a requirement if you want a receipt to show ID. Although I'm not sure how it addresses the problem. And after showing it, I duly receive a receipt. I take the money back to the office and give it to the manager in question, no problem. A few weeks later I repeat the process. It dawns on me that if this continues there's every chance the tax department is going to start having a closer look at me and my substantial extra income, so I decide to not get a receipt. I'm a trustworthy character, so don't anticipate an issue when I return and give the same manager a handful of cash. Something like $730.50, an odd amount. He wants to know where the receipt is, so I outline my concern about my name and not the company's being on all the receipts and my possible future tax bill. He tells me in no uncertain terms that a receipt is required. I suggested that I had no interest in pilvering any of the company's money, but if he wanted a receipt, I suggested in the future I would be more than happy to use his ID for the receipt. This was met with silence. I've taken one more lot of scraps since then. The money didn't make it upstairs. Instead it went into the desk drawer of front of my department's managers, where it was used for the beer slush fund. The last story is called The Power of Compliance. My family is Polish, but my parents moved to England. My grandfather, the main character of today's story, is an ex-veteran, so he was what some would call very by the book. In his world, rules were the main priority. Everything else was less important. One day, my mother was going on a road trip to a military camp. He had to use country lanes and not highways to get there. From the moment they left, there was a man honking his horn, revving his engine and being a pain in the neck. My grandfather was extremely annoyed, so he pulled over to talk to the man. They had a brief shouting match, but then he came back. One cloud of dust later, he was gone. Turns out my grandfather had let the guy pass, because to quote him, it would have been dangerous to have him driving like that. A couple of minutes go by, and my grandfather and everyone else sees the speeding job's car upside down hanging in a tree. I later found out from my mother that he had to be hospitalized and was fined for speeding, and that is how my grandfather got someone hospitalized by complying. And with that we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories in today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe.
，拜拜。